Hi everyone, welcome to Love and Life's Journey. I'm Chantel. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also the bell when it appears so YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. Today's video is a look for less challenge. This is a challenge that is put on by Yami from the Latina Next Door, and every month she chooses a co-host. This month's co-host is Kristen K. And I love both of their channels. They are uh, very creative, have a lot of great ideas, and they do a lot of similar videos to what I do, and I, I just get inspired by them. And so I will put the links to their channels in the description box below so that you can check those out. This month I decided to do a wall decor project. I saw this set of uh, metal flowers. There were five large decorative flowers and uh, that was $218 for the set. And uh, they're really cool looking, but I would never pay that much for them. And so I knew that I could figure out a way to make them for less. And uh, it was a little bit challenging, but I think I've come up with a great alternative and I've saved tons of money. So I'm excited to show these to you. So let's just jump right in. So here's the set of metal flowers that I found that I wanted to recreate. These are from a website called bellafour.com and they are $217.95 for these five flowers. So I am going to recreate two of these flowers in this video and uh, these are the two that I have chosen. So the main thing that I am using for these flowers are these cookie sheets from Dollar Tree. They come in a two pack and they're basically just heavy aluminum foil. I picked up four packages of these for the large flower, so a total of eight trays. I cut out some patterns for my flower petals and I will put a link in the description box below to a pattern that you can download for these. I'll also be using some chalk paint in the color Elephant and also in the color Truffle. These are Waverly chalk paints and I picked these up at Walmart for about $5 a bottle. You also need one piece of foam core board and you can pick this up at Dollar Tree. I'll be using an old pair of scissors, a pen, paintbrush, some paper towels, and it's not shown in this picture, but also a box cutter. You can just use hot glue for this project, but if you want it to be stronger or you're going to put it outside, I would highly recommend using something like E6000. For the center of the flower, I'm going to be using some paints that I've actually had for a really, really long time. Um, kind of a gold color, an uh, antique gold color, and then a burnt sienna, and then some gold sparkle paint that I have just to add a little bit of shine to it. Um, you can use any colors that you want for the center. I just uh, chose these colors because I thought it would uh, look a little bit more like the inspiration piece. If you want to use these outside, I would recommend gluing two of the trays together with E6000. And you can just put E6000 on there and then put the other tray on top and then weight it down with some books or something heavy until it dries just to give it a little bit more stability. Uh, I am not doing that for my flower because I'm just going to put them inside, but if you do want to put them outside, I would highly recommend that you do this. And of course, you would need to buy twice as many trays if you're going to do this. The first step is to cut off the outside edge all the way around the trays. And when you're cutting these trays, you need to be really careful because it can be sharp. But one reason I chose to do it with this instead of buying actual tin is because I hate working with tin and tin snips and you have to wear gloves and it's just really sharp and hard to, to manipulate. And so I wanted something that was a lot easier to work with. And so I chose these because you can cut them. You don't have to wear gloves and you can just cut them with scissors and um, it's a lot safer. So I'm just going to trace my pattern using a pen or a pencil. And I found with the large petals, I could get four on a sheet. 
and then I just uh, put two or le left two of the sheets together and cut them out at the same time and it was really easy to cut through two thicknesses of this with the scissors. Then I'm going to paint my petals to make them look more like galvanized metal. So I'm going to use the elephant chalk paint and I'm just going to really kind of sloppily put paint on these. Um, just brush it kind of all over and um, then I'm going to use paper towel to kind of blot it and spread it around and I do want some of the, the shiny metal to shine through the paint so you don't want to cover it all the way. And I'm just going to repeat this process for all of the petals. And this is a little bit time consuming, but I just put in a movie and just um, went at it. And um, it took a total of probably about three hours from start to finish to create this flower. Once all the petals are painted with the elephant paint and they're dry, then I'm going to take the truffle colored chalk paint and I'm just going to use this to add some um, rust-like effects to the petals. And it doesn't show up as much in the video as it does in real life um, here, but I'm just kind of lightly brushing along all the edges. And then even in the center, I added a little bit more to the tops and the bottoms of the petals and just tried to do a little bit of random uh, placement of this paint uh, because rust is just kind of wherever, so I wanted to make it look a little bit more realistic. Once my petals were all painted, I laid them out to see about how large I wanted to make the center of the flower. And this is about six and a half inches in diameter, which is what this flower pot is. So I'm just going to use this as my uh, pattern or template to cut out the center of the flower. I'll be cutting the center of the flower out of this foam board that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. And I'm just using that flower pot as my template. And then I'll just cut it out using my razor knife. I also need a larger circle that I'm going to use for the back of the flower to uh, glue all of the petals onto. This is not going to show and I did not measure it exactly. I just used the center of the flower as kind of a guide and made it about two inches larger all the way around. I also cut out a larger circle of the aluminum trays and then I'm going to take some fiber fill that I had on hand. You could use probably tissue or fabric or paper towel or something just to give it a little bit more dimension. I'm just going to glue that onto the center and then place that upside down on the tin and then fold that all the way, fold that up all the way around uh, just to create the center of the flower. And I did find that I needed to use uh, hot glue and secure that. Uh, just be careful when you're doing this because the hot glue makes the tin really hot. And so I used a little tool to help press down the, the tin or the foil so that um, I wouldn't burn my fingers. I did actually accidentally bend my foil right here and I, at first I was kind of bummed but after I got it all painted and, and I had it finished I really liked the way it looked. I thought it uh, just gave it a little bit more of a realistic look. Now I'm going to paint the center of my flower. I'm just going to use the antique gold paint that I had and uh, just paint the whole thing gold at first. When the gold is dry, I'm going to come in with the burnt sienna and I'm just dabbing it along the edges at first. I can always add more, but I'm starting with a light coat 
and uh, putting a little bit more around the very edge and a little bit lighter as I work in toward the center of the flower. And so I do put a few little strokes in the center of the flower and try to accent where that dent is as well. Then I'm going to take the truffle chalk paint and add a little bit more around the very edges and on that dent and just a little bit in the center of the flower as well. I wanted to add some curl to my petals and I found the best way to do this was with a rolling pin and if you want more curl you just press harder. Next I'm going to trace the center of my flower on that larger piece of foam core that we cut out just to give me a reference kind of where I want to glue the petals down. And when I start my first row I just want to make sure that the end of the petal is down past the center of the flower. If you're going to put these outside I would recommend using E6000 and then a little bit of hot glue to help adhere it. Again, be careful, the hot glue does make the tin uh, pretty warm. I did a couple petals using the E6000 and then decided I was not going to put these outside, so I just went to strictly using my hot glue gun. Once the outside layer of petals was glued on, then I just took the smaller petals and went around uh, bringing them in toward the center a little bit more and uh, glued them on in the same way. This step is totally optional. I just decided I wanted the center to stick up a little bit more. And so I added some of these felt pads from Dollar Tree in the center and that just held it up a little bit more and gave it a little bit more um, height. Then I just added some hot glue to the top of those felt pads and glued the center of the flower directly on top. For a hanger, I just took a little piece of twine and then glued it to the back of the flower and this made a really simple and effective hanger. And this is my finished flower and I am really happy with how it turned out. Now I'm going to show you how to make the flower on the left. For this flower, we will be using three different sizes of petals, and they are made exactly like the other petals were made as far as cutting them out and painting them. I will put the link to the pattern for these petals in the description box as well. We'll use 10 of the large petals, 10 of the medium sized petals, and 16 of the small petals. And for the small ones, we're going to paint eight of them uh, in the finish that you see here, just like all the other petals, and then eight of them are going to be painted in a different finish, which I will show you next. For the center of the flower, I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum Hammered Metallic Paint. It's kind of in a um, oil rubbed bronze finish, and I'm just going to spray paint these, and I'm not going to give them a real heavy coat, just kind of a light painting, um, so that some of the silver shows through a little bit too and I'm going to spray paint both the front and the back of these because they are going to be uh, curled over so you will see both sides. Once the spray paint is dried I'm going to take my elephant chalk paint and just brush a little bit of it on the edges and the top and bottom like I did on all of the other petals as well just to give it a little bit more of a depth and dimension. For this flower, I want the petals to have a definite crease down the center. So here I'm using a paint stirring stick. You could use a ruler or any other straight edge. And I'm folding the, leaf, the petal in half 
and uh, just shaping it a little bit more and this gives it a different look than that first flower that I made. So here I have all of my petals prepped. They are all painted and creased and ready to assemble. For the back of this flower, I cut out another six and a half inch diameter circle out of foam core board. And that's what I'm going to use to glue the petals on for this flower. Before I start gluing, I lay all of my petals around just so I can get an idea of how they're going to fit and if I have enough petals or how I want to space them. And then I will uh, remove the top layers and just start gluing down the first layer of petals and just work in from there. For the center of the flower, I'm going to take six of those spray painted petals and put those around in the center, just like I've been doing for all the other petals. And then I'm going to take the two remaining petals and I'm going to use those to cover up the remaining white foam core. So I'm just going to uh, put one kind of over half of that remaining white circle in the center and the other one over the other half. And then I'll just curl those center pieces in to make it look more like the center of a flower. I have to say I really love how this turned out. This is definitely my favorite of the two that I've made. So once again, here was my inspiration, $218 for this set of five. I figured out that mine that I made, uh, if you calculated out the cost per flower, the inspiration would be $44 each, and I created mine for just $6 each. Now I did have some of the supplies on hand, but even if you had to buy everything I've shown you, it would cost about $36 to make the whole set of five flowers. So once I finish my set of five flowers, I will have saved $182. Let me know in the comments which of these flowers is your favorite. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you so much to Yami and Kristen K for hosting this challenge this month. I will put the links to their channels in the description box below as well as the playlist link for the look for less challenge for March and you can check out all of the other projects uh, that are going to be on that playlist as well again thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time